my name is Marietta Le, and I work for Atlatso. Atlatso means transparent in Hungarian. It's an NGO uh, that works for transparency in Hungary, and it's a news site as well that publishes investigative stories on corruption. Uh, today I'm going to talk about everything that you can see on this slide, so from Freedom of Information Act to technology, about transparency, and also about Atlatso. Uh, you will learn some things about the Hungarian situation, the Hungarian NGOs, and also I will tell you some interesting facts about Nordic or Northern countries as well. Um, so let's start it. Uh, Atlatso was uh, started in 2011 uh, in order to basically have an independent uh, platform for investigative stories. The main problem at that time was that uh, the founder of the site, Bodoki Tamás, or Tamás Bodoki, he resigned from one of Hungary's uh, largest news sites because uh, his investigative story was edited and a paragraph was taken out from the story which was conflicting the interest of the owner of the news site. So, uh, because of this, uh, Bodoki decided to start his own media outlet which was first uh, basically a blog publishing his stories but then he had uh, other colleagues, he had lawyers, hackers, uh, every kind of people who could help him with this. And actually I have to mention that our first editorial meetings in 2011 and in 2012, they were at the Hackerspace Budapest. So it's a very sweet memory for me to, to go to the Hackerspace Budapest and actually uh, because of the former place where it was, which is now not existing anymore. It's a party place if you want to visit it then. It's still there but you cannot see the rest of the hacker space. So what we do, we heavily rely on the Hungarian legislation uh, which is called the Freedom of Information Act. I will tell you how the legislation works but it basically means that every citizen has the right to learn uh, about the spendings and the activities of uh, public bodies, government bodies, and also about how public money is spent. So who are our users? Uh, just to know Atlas a bit better, uh, we also have uh, several uh, services that we call uh, services. We have Magyar Leaks, which is a leaking service where you can uh, leak stories uh, based on the GlobalX platform through Tor browser uh, to Atlas so as journalists and uh, we always uh, process the documents and uh, the whole system is based on the fact that we are not leaking things per se, we are processing the stories and we are finding evidences from all the sites. Uh, that's Magyar Leaks and then we have the Hungarian version of ipaythebribe.com which is a website where you can anonymously report uh, where, how much, and to whom you paid bribes or kickbacks. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very interesting uh, way to picture to Hungarian people where and how much they pay. And there's there's a lot of there are a lot of stories about doctors, especially you know women giving birth, and it's uh, very common to give uh, bribes to doctors or to policemen or uh, or who else when people are obtaining their driving licenses. That's also a place to give bribes, apparently. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to make this a bit uh, tacky in the sense that we needed a tool to use this Freedom of Information Act or the law. Uh, what, in our case, what happens is that the journalist learns in, about the news, about something that sounds interesting to him, about spending public money in a strange way. You know, like, basically you are watching your Facebook feed, and you see that the Hungarian, no, sorry, it's not the government, uh, so that someone ordered Gripen fighter jets to the opening ceremony of a stadium. 
and you wonder how much that cost. And anyway, why would you have fighter jets at the opening of a football stadium? So that's what our journalists do. They check the news and then uh, one of our journalists filed a freedom of information request, which is the way, you, uh, the way how you can ask uh, the public bodies about money spending, yeah? Yeah, actually, th three of them flew over the stadium. It was a, like a week ago or something. We had a new stadium open for one of Hungary's biggest soccer clubs. And, uh, and what came out was that they replied that it costs no money because there was no request and there's no documentation. So, you know, our journalists figured that, you know, if you want fighter jets over your birthday party, you just have to ask. That's it. Uh, so, but what if this journalist wanted to ask several questions to several public bodies, and he, he would have to write the letters, he would have to check who was the data custodian. The data custodian is the public body who holds the information you want to know of. Uh, and also he would have to send these requests and keep track of them and all that administration which uh, which is quite hard if you're a journalist and you have a lot of work and anyway you have to do other stuff as well. So uh, we found a tool for this. Uh, here is our first tour to Northern Europe. Uh, Alavetteli is a place in Finland. Uh, there is a free and open source software that was developed by a British NGO. Uh, and they named uh, the software after, uh, after the village where the guy lived. Uh, his name is Anders Kidenius. Uh, and he was a priest in the 1700s and he fought for freedom of information and free press and all that. So they gave a, a rather an international name to this software, which we use now in Hungary. And it is called Kimitud. Kimitud means who knows what, and actually the name follows the international examples of uh, the implementations of Alavetteli, because in the EU you have Ask the EU, and in Britain you have What Do They Know, so Kimitud is playing on that uh, kind of naming uh, convention. Uh, and Közérdekű English is the Hungarian term for freedom of information request. This is like the opening of our website and why we wanted to introduce it is not only to support the journalists doing their work, but also to lower the barriers and have citizens send freedom of information requests. And uh, that's also why I'm here now, because I want you to use this tool or ac the actual legislation, because you have to know what the government does with your money. Uh, so. Here's the math. Uh, the legislation works like this. You, the, you file a freedom of information request with the help of Kimitud. Kimitud has a template of an email where you just enter what kind of information you want to ask about. So in the case of uh, grip and fighter jets, I search for the data custodian, which is the Hungarian, uh, what's that? Not the foreign ministry. Oh, the ministry. Ministry. Oh, minister of defense, yeah. Uh, and, then, and then I put how much did the fighter jets flying over the new stadium cost. And then they have to answer in 15 days or they have 15 days to tell you if they need more uh, time, which cannot exceed an extra 15 days. Uh, they can ask you to pay some kind of uh, fee, for example, for copying or scanning. Or, or sending you stuff on a DVD or whatever, but uh, the law also restricts that, so you, you, they cannot actually ask for too much money, but I will tell a story about that as well. And then, if you receive the answer, uh, you can keep track of uh, your answers with the help of Kimitud as well, so we are sending email aler alerts to the users, but then if you are sending it just in an email or by post, then you have to remember the dates. Uh, but you have 30 days to uh, fight this answer if you need more information, if you want to start a procedure, if you want to demand for an investigation at the National Information Authority. So you have uh, 
a lot of uh, tools that apply if you want to obtain this information. And I thought that this more or less equals to transparency in the sense that they are obliged to give you these documents. And if they are not giving it, then you have to start a lawsuit. And that's what we do, actually. Atlatso starts lawsuits in many cases. And we win 60%, approximately. So I thought I would give you some user stories about how to use the Freedom of Information request. User number one would be my boss, who is uh, Tamás Bodoki, 40-something, uh, lives in Budapest. You know, uh, number, user number one, uh, he requested information about uh, one Budapest district's uh, contracts with construction companies. And uh, we actually had to file a lawsuit where they said that uh, we would have to pay something like $10,000 for the copying. And then, of course, we were saying that this is just too much. You know, you cannot ask that much money. Uh, and then, of course, it went down to, so it was like 2 million forints, and then it, it went down to 200,000. So it's like really much less. But then we received a lot of uh, scanned documents, invoices, and we needed volunteers to process the information. So what you can see there was a picture I sent to our, I sent to our volunteers. There were 40 volunteers who entered uh, 800 uh, pieces of information, meaning that these were like invoice parts. So one piece was about one work they did for some building and then it covered 400 million forints. And the name of the company was Sirt. Uh, so user number two, I don't have a picture for this. Uh, some of the stories are from real life, some of them are from uh, my experiences. I do some kind of, something like customer service for Kimitud. So I would say there is this uh, neighbor guy also about 40, and he wants to fight also a Budapest district who decided to change the, the face of one neighborhood, and he didn't like it. He thought that they are changing the pavement and the stoned uh, roads to something much worse. They are not building enough bike lanes, and they are not t uh, talking to people about the changes in the district. And he thought that there is corruption behind this. So I was helping him to figure out who were the data custodians, to ask for information, to ask for the, the contracts and the invoices, and uh, actually the plans of the construction in that area. There's user number three. Uh, she would be a person some, somewhere around 60, 70 years old. I, would, I have to say that in these cases, uh, Olavetteli or many other tools for democracy are lagging in the sense that they are not for people who are not uh, literate, in, literate enough in using the internet, basically. So you, you will have to walk, through, uh, walk them through how to register on a website, and then how does the filling of a template work? But then if they learn it, then you have a lot of new citizens who can ask about their neighborhood, their city, their village. So we, we would have a grandma who would ask about a small town in Hungary which let, the, which let uh, natural reserves uh, or sold natural reserves to a big shopping mall. And she wants to know who decided about this and when and how much did that cost to the shopping mall, how much did they pay for this? And that way she can uh, enhance transparency in her own neighborhood. And actually, these people in small towns or villages, they know much more about corruption cases, so they know to, uh, what to ask. Because in many cases, you have to uh, do more investigation to learn uh, how to ask for documents, what kind of documents, and who are the data custodians. So. Grandma is very smart, but she has to learn how to use Kimitud. 
And then another user story. Uh, I know of someone who runs a website that uh, repairs potholes in Budapest. And uh, there was a case when they received an answer from a, a Budapest district, because di Budapest has 23 districts. That's why I'm always saying that, yeah, it's one of them. Uh, and they said they are not going to repair potholes that were reported through the website because they already, already repaired 5,000 in, in that year. So, meaning that, you know, imagine one district, 5,000 potholes. In Buda, which is the wealthier part of Budapest. So, you kind of think, where are the potholes, or what kind of roads they have, or what's the problem there? And what can an activist do in that case? Like, if you, if you know this is just the lie of a press person from the local government. You can go to Kimitud and ask for that data that proves it. So uh, the person went on Kimitud and asked, OK, so during that period, how many potholes did you repair? How much did it cost? And who were contracted for doing the job? And what they said was uh, something like 19, uh, 1,913, which is much less than 5,000. And in the meantime, they asked other districts as well, and other districts said numbers like 500, meaning that they counted every pothole, like I don't know how many times, to report as high number as possible to be able to somehow like each, reach that 5,000, which is not true. So it was a lie, and we could prove it through uh, Kimitud. And then uh, <coughs> everything seems so fine and it looks like we really have a tool to enhance transparency and prove the guys are lying and they are stealing public money and whatnot. But the problem is that last year the Hungarian government introduced uh, the monopoly of the tobacco selling uh, now only people with licenses can sell tobacco in tobacco shops. And uh, a joint uh, initiative was uh, started by transparency NGOs, Atlatso was among them, and some media outlets, and we filed a freedom of information requests asking them about uh, on what grounds did people receive licenses, where are the applications to obtain a license, and who were on the committee who decided about uh, who gets the license. And uh, after this was filed, uh, like on Friday, two MPs uh, submitted a draft to the Freedom of Information Act, an amendment to the Freedom of Information Act on Sunday, which was approved by Tuesday. So in like less than a week, they restricted the law and they said that you are not allowed to file vexatious freedom of information requests, which means to them that you are not allowed to ask for every invoice related to the spending of public money, which is obviously very uh, bad because you cannot check where the money went and you cannot check who were on the contract, and you cannot check anything that is related to the whole story. And at the moment, this law uh, is in force, and what we are doing now, we are trying to file at the same time requests that would be denied based on this new amendment. So we could take them to court and fight the, fight the amendment and basically make them take it back. But then, this year, another Nordic country, uh, Atlas is not only asking vexatiously for information, it is also working from uh, a grant that is provided by uh, some Nordic countries, among them Norway. Uh, in Hungary, this story is uh, referred to the Norwegian uh, scandal or issue or whatever because the grant itself is called the Norway Grant. And we received a grant to run a project that promotes the use of uh, freedom of information requests and the use of Kimitud. 
and now the Hungarian government is uh, trying to put some obstacles in our way and uh, they send the government control office on 58 NGOs that received grants from this uh, Norway NGO fund and uh, they ask for every document we have uh, related to the projects that are spon uh, funded by the Norway grant. And this, uh, this is an ongoing case. So at the moment there is a police investigation against one of the donor NGOs. Uh, we don't know what will come out of this, but if you want to learn a bit more about uh, the situation in Hungary, then you have to look for the expression Norway grant and the Hungarian government and you will see interesting articles about it. And uh, I thought I would raise a, a, a technology issue with you and ask you how you would use Kimitu and what kind of questions you would ask. And uh, here I thought I would tell you my story. Uh, last year the Hungarian government, the Ministry of Interior introduced a, a new measure in which uh, it was something like uh, an application for every local government to set up CCTV systems but uh, the rumor says that it was not uh, they, di they did not apply they, they had to apply and uh, one of Budapest districts received 220 million forints to install a facial recognition system and cameras and I thought it's really upsetting so I filed a freedom of information request asking them uh, about the contracts and everything at the moment uh, they say they are not giving it to me because it's uh, part of a decision making process and they haven't signed the contract yet Bec it's in itself it could be fought but I thought that they since they promised they would give me the contract I would wait uh, in the meantime, I asked them to give me a list of their CCTVs. So it's already there on Kimitu. It's also a good thing that uh, Kimitu publishes everything online, so you have an archive of information people requested. So if you want to know more about CCTV in District 8 of Budapest, then you just uh, search for it on the website. And uh, I thought in the meantime I wouldn't be uh, just sitting around and waiting for their contract since there were almost a hundred or I'm not sure but a lot of uh, local governments that received money. Uh, I asked three of them about the contracts and one of them replied uh, the name of the village is Nyirmegyes. So in Nyirmegyes the local government replied that before they had no CCTV systems, but now they received 70 million forints to install one. And uh, they gave me the contract, they gave me the list of the places where the cameras will be put, and they gave me the technical requirements. What kind of cameras, what kind of providers they have to contract, and what kind of uh, uh, technical qualities they have to feel fulfill, meaning that the Ministry of Interior even uh, put in the contract the capabilities of the cameras, the streaming, uh, the system has to support VPN connection, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I wanted to ask you if you think freedom of information requests are useful in order to enhance uh, transparency in technology because in these cases uh, I would say that if we learn more about what kind of technology they install as public bodies or what kind of technology they use for uh, surveillance itself or government website or whatever, uh, if we request that information, we actually can say that it's a security issue and also it's about public money since before we, we have already asked about how much uh, developing a website costs to a government. And as you can see, they are sharing information about what kind of cameras are surveying us. So uh, since my job is about teaching people to use freedom of information requests, I would like you to tell me or 
advice on what kind of questions can be asked under the freedom of information law about technology that is used by the government. Can you ask all the cameras of the country? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I think so. Like someone did it before, but I think that uh, has to be updated. Uh, also, there were rumors that some some people would do uh, a map of it on OpenStreetMap because we have already the list. So, yeah, you can ask about that. Yes, actually, uh, our editor in chief asked about Finn Fisher, and they refused it based on nation national yeah. security. So uh, well, it's already proved that they have it. Yeah. Um, one interesting character, maybe you already know, but the people in the U.S. have started trying recently is um, after a request is denied or partially denied, submitting another request about that request and all of the processing notes for it. <laughs> I haven't heard about that, but that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. What about the, uh, looking for contracts in public administration uh, that would mandate the use of free software? Mm -hmm. And still demonstrate if you don't find any that are just doing what you should. You mean uh, c contracts uh, or? Any, any like public tenants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some advocacy work done, but I don't think they asked about this in freedom of information requests. So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but uh, do you think if I would ask uh, the Hungarian government, how do they uh, keep the information about uh, people who register on a healthcare website? Uh, do you think there would be people who would check if it's all right and correct and yeah, secure? Ask, and ask specifically for the database layout, not for the data itself, but for the layout. Mm -hmm. No That's vexatious. Yeah, there is no hope for us. Can you ask like uh, I want to see all the income of the government uh, and all the out going spending of the uh, <laughs> the budget the of yeah. the Hungarian government? Yeah. You can actually ask that and I think they are uh, sharing reports about it, but of, uh, we don't have nice websites that can show you that but yeah that's also a good initiative that could uh, have transparency in Hungary but that's an information that you are allowed to ask about yeah so if there's no more suggestions uh, I would like to say we have a, a new campaign at lots of 4,000 we calculated that, that we need 4,000 people to uh, subscribe to Atlas for one year and that covers our core activities so if you like our work then please join the subscri subscribers 
and uh, you can learn about our work at atlaso.hu or about this specific project about uh, freedom of information uh, at atlaso.net and also we have some of our articles translated into English and if you need help with freedom of information requests or or you need information about Hungary then please uh, shoot an email and I will try to help yeah that's it thank you